Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm playing one of these things again. The name of this game is the Pandora Directive, and it's the fourth, fourth installment in the Tex Murphy series. And it looks like it has a similar interface to uh, Tex Murphy 3, the, uh, the, who's it, the, call it, the, um, Ah, uh, what was that called? Um, Under a Killing Moon. So, without further ado, here we go. Oh, I have to... Uh, my name is Nathan. Uh, do you wish to play the entertainment level or the game player's level? We recommend that everyone, except experienced gamer game players, select the entertainment level the first time through. There are hints available on this level, as well as an option to bypass the more difficult puzzles. Refer to the hint system. The game player's level is very challenging and should be selected only by experienced game players, or by players who have already gone through the entertainment level. There are no hints available, but instead of 1,000, or excuse me, yeah, there are no hints available, but instead of 1,500 possible points, there are 4,000. In addition, there are bonus locations and puzzles. Note, both levels have three narrative paths through the story, leading to a total of seven combined endings. Um, you know what? I fancy myself to be a game player. I think I'll do the game player version. You know, three days have passed. Uh, Mission Street. Be thoughtful, kind, and choose the high road. Lombard Street. Stay neutral and perhaps a little naive. Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Be antagonistic and selfish. A tutorial of how to use the virtual world engines is available in the help system. Hmm. This is a regular Walking Dead, folks. That's the name of the game. Wow, some pretty impressive 3D graphics here. Some kind of mysterious figure. It's not Tex Murphy, is it? Whoever it is is making a lot of noise for... Oh. So one of the things that he took out was a copy of Under Killing Moon. Which 
She must be a heavy sleeper. So I'm not sure how to interpret the fact that under a killing moon... Oh, she's dead. Okay. I guess that makes a little more sense. That's a little unsettling. Um, I don't know quite how to interpret the fact that uh, in the Tex Murphy universe, a copy of the third Tex Murphy game exists. In this universe, is the third Tex Murphy game like a documentary video game? Or I guess it could have been a dramatization of events or something that in this game world is a something or other. I don't know. Ah, oh, there he is. Old Texas M himself. You know I'm turning 30 tomorrow. Did you know that? Well, happy birthday. You know, I was just thinking you don't look a day over 25. Liar. I don't know, I've just been feeling very stuck lately. Uh, you know, I cannot remember the last time I was surprised by anything. Can you? The last time I was surprised was by you. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, I'm just surprised that we're able to stay good friends. I've been thinking about moving. Maybe Phoenix. I've got an old college friend that lives down there, and she says it's nice. I think the change would do me good. What do you think? Yeah, I think you'll love it down there, because they're square dancing and ten-gallon hats and armadillo hunting. Okay. And macho yokels with names like Tex. Okay, not sure. So tell me, what do you think? You think I should go or not? Well, you know, Arizona may seem like a much more exciting place than San Francisco, but it's dangerous down there. <laughs> At least around here, not you sure I agree with that. Out for you. It's dangerous everywhere. I mean, especially here. I mean, did you hear about that co-ed? Someone murdered her in her own bedroom. Oh, that co-ed. I didn't hear about that. Who killed her? You know, the newspaper said it might be a serial killer. They gave him some kind of crazy Apparently name. in the future we will I, refer I, to I uh, female college Doesn't students as co-eds again. I mean, I'm a tough guy and it scares me. I appreciate your concern, Tex. But I have been fine on my own for a long time. Looks like the rain's letting up. I'm going home. Got a big date? Oh, yeah. Cary Grant and a pint of hockey dust. Hold me down. See you later. What a schmuck. <laughs> what? What wizard says, welcome to the world of tomorrow. evening you blew every one of them. The son P.I. you are. So you wouldn't know a clue if it walked up and punched you in the face. Listen, all I know is, every time I try and ask her out, she turns me down. It's from the distinguished gentleman in the corner. Bought you a bourbon. <laughs> I guess this is the place you go if you want expensive drinks. This is a diner looking place. Oh, good evening, good evening. Gordon Fitzpatrick is my name. Please sit down, sir. You know, I am not in the habit of 
eavesdropping, but I do believe I heard someone say that you were a private detective. That's right. I'm a licensed private investigator. Oh, delightful. It's a pleasure indeed to meet you and your name? Murphy. Tex Murphy. Tex Murphy. Well, 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 this is fine. Now listen, let me ask you this, Mr. Tex Murphy. Have you in your work ever had the occasion to seek for a missing person? Sure. I can do that. Well, then perhaps we could do some business. Well, I think we can work something out. My office is just around the corner. The Ritz Hotel. Why don't we go there? Ah, the Ritz Hotel. A great place for an office, I guess. I like your office. Oh, yes, the ambiance is very authentic. Reminds me of those, uh, you know, those old detective stories that I used to watch when I was a kid. I'm sure that at any moment, Sam Spade is going to come marching through that door, but then who needs Sam Spade when I've got Tex Murphy standing I guess uh, Sam Spade you will have a, be a private eye? revitalization sometime in the Going future. Back, I can remember. Mm -hmm. Unless he's like a thousand years old or something. Yeah. While all the other kids were logged on to Sesame Street Interactive, I was reading Hammett and Chandler. It must be quite an exciting life. Oh, it's got its moments. Don't get me wrong, it's not like the movies. It sure as hell doesn't pay very well. But it suits me. So what can I do for you, Mr. Fitzpatrick? Well, I'm trying to find an old acquaintance of mine, Thomas Malloy, Dr. Thomas Malloy. The last official address for him that I have is the Ritz Hotel. Now, do you happen to know him? I can say that I do. Well, it's very important that I find him. You know, let me give you a little background. For many years, I was a research scientist and I worked alongside Dr. Malloy. But about 20 years ago, maybe, I guess something like that, our paths diverged and I lost touch with him, he with me. And then very recently, I saw a photograph of him in a local newspaper. Now, it's a strange thing, how time is such a natural equalizer, makes us appreciate the faces from one's past. At any rate, the older gentleman in that photograph is Dr. Malloy. And I contacted the newspaper to find out where the photograph had been taken. It was at the San Francisco Technical University. Well, I hiked right out there, got to the campus, and decided to look the man up and surprise him. Even with that photograph, no one recognized him. No one knew his name. But then I received a strange phone call from a young woman named Sandra. The man I knew as Thomas Malloy, she knew as Tyson Matthews. Ah. She seemed quite uncomfortable talking on the vid phone, so I suggested we meet. She never showed up for that appointment. Interesting. You never heard from her again? You know, it's strange. But this simple, whimsical wish of mine to get I'm guessing she was the woman who was uh, dead in her bed at the beginning. I don't know, I feel a sense of impending doom. I fear for the young woman, and I fear for my friend, Dr. Malloy. It sounds interesting. I think I can look into this for you. Thank you. Now, you'll have to refresh my memory. How much, how much is your fee? How does it work? I charge $500 a day. Of course. Plus expenses. Naturally. There, that should be enough to get you started. And here, here somewhere, there you go. I could be reached at that number. I'll be in touch. I feel we're off to a good start. Not Mr. Fitzpatrick. This is the first cash I've had in months. 
Four grand. I owe Louie 200 <laughs> bucks, and Rook says I owe him 300. But there should be plenty left over. Yes, sir. Things are definitely looking up. Oops. Day one, the search for Malloy. Fitzpatrick didn't give me much to go on. Just the newspaper photo of Malloy and the fact that Malloy stayed here at the Ritz. Then there's that girl Fitzpatrick referred to, Sandra. Maybe I can track her down. First I need to find out which apartment Malloy was staying in and then get into it. That means I gotta deal with Nilo, my landlord. It's the second week of April and I'm a little late on my February rent payment. Well? All right, so, um, press spacebar to walk around. Okay, so yeah, it's the same as the other installment. I'll pick up these clothes next time I'm expecting someone else in my bedroom. Yeah, fat chance of that. <laughs> ah, the downy fresh hub of my swinging bachelor pad. Whatever you say, Tex. Space girl Doris. With your own form-fitting air suit and come-hither smile, I still dream of you and a lunar landing. Ah. It's my own little attempt at creative horticulture. My parents found this in the attic and sent it to me. I remember the pastoral days of my early youth riding on my trusty Mount Striper chasing bank robbers and horse thieves. And all that came to an end one summer afternoon during an electrical storm. The lightning struck a transformer near our home, creating a tremendous power surge. Aww. It was after the accident that Poor my brothers and sisters started calling me Tex. Whenever I asked them, they'd just laugh and wink at each other. I never did find out about that nickname. <laughs> he left a Texas-shaped uh, hole in the ceiling. Not sure how that, how he managed to do that, but, you know. It's my own little... Alright. So... Once again, we have this unique way of getting around. Which is using the mouse. What wizard says good. A good joke. I guess you could call it that. All right, well, this place is a dump. Uh... No windows or anything. All right. Okay, I guess this is your office, right? Looks a little different than it did in the last game. Let's see if there's anything in my drawer here. Gotta situate myself, which is, of course, a little difficult with this interface, but there we go. Yeah, another bill from the electronic shop. 
I can't believe they expect me to pay for the junk they sell. <laughs> All right, I guess I need to pay, pay this bill. Nothing interesting here. Took me three days of hard work to empty this drawer out. Good. These drawers are the holding area for stuff that's about to be tossed out in the trash. And I really need to find some stuff. That's my Jane Mansfield coloring book and the Inspector Poirot mask I used last Halloween. Inspector Prowl. Can I take my mask? This thing sure beats my old death. I really need to find some. It's taken me years to fill up these drawers. All right. Another can of eat the rich dog food. Well, at least I'll never starve. <laughs> you live off do dog food, Tex? Jeez. So to inform you, this account is delinquent and must be paid immediately. If payment is not received within three hours of this notice, it will be sent to the Body Parts Collection Agency for media action. Alright, well, um, <laughs> do I just go to the electronics shop to pay that off? I've had this jackknife ever since my Weeblows days. Guess we'll take the jackknife too. What is this? Took me forever to get this diploma. I had to send in a hundred proofs of purchase from True Detective. Ah. He must have been a huge fan of that Matthew McConaughey joint. Still weird footprints on the ground. This is my official front door. It leads to the fire escape. <laughs> Good. I should probably stop by the newsstand and see if Chelsea's upset with me about last night. I've been trying to get her to go out with me for years now, and just when I think I might be getting somewhere, I stick my big foot in my mouth. Well, now I got some money, and maybe she'll give me another chance to let me take her out to dinner. Good idea. Um... Alright, so this is the old... I recognize this from the previous game. Uh, what wizard says? Does he have a picture of Hillary Clinton on his desk? Uh, no, I think that's his ex-wife. Hey Chelsea, how's the newsstand going at this hour? It seems like a strange time to still be selling newspapers, but to each their own. Hi Tex. Uh, I'm going to attempt an apology. 
Hey, I'm, you know, I'm sorry about last night. Is that so? Why? Um... Orthopedic humor. <laughs> like, you know, I feel like I swallowed my foot last night and left a bad taste in my mouth. That's metaphorically speaking, of course, because actually my feet smell pretty good. Huh. You really don't have to handle me with kid gloves, Tex. I know I'm getting older, and it's not like guys are lined up to take me out. What Wizard says was his ex-wife Hillary Clinton. Um, unless Tex Murphy is an alias for Bill Clinton, and this is um, the his dark year, his dark post-presidency years, then I don't think so. I will humbly ask her out. Yeah, I've got kind of a stupid idea. Why don't you let me take you out to dinner tonight? What? Like a date? Um... I will describe a dream date. Well, sure, you know. Dinner, a movie. Maybe a trip up to my swinging bachelor pad for some strip bar cheesy. Gee, Tex, sometimes you are so sexy. Let's change the subject before I get too excited. <laughs> What Wizard says, maybe his ex-wife was a future clone of Hillary Clinton, like in that episode of Futurama with Lucy Liu. Probably. That, that would be a more sensible explanation, considering the year that this game takes place in. Uh, can I ask you questions? The name doesn't ring a bell. All right, she doesn't know anything about Thomas Malloy, which is the guy I'm looking for. Do you know anything about Sandra? I don't know anyone by that name. How about this newspaper photo of Malloy? I think you might be asking the wrong person. How about Tyson Matthews? The name doesn't ring a bell. How about Nilo? Nilo's a scum. Oh. There was a single mother who stayed at the Ritz before here. you moved in. And when she lost her job, Nilo kicked her out onto the street. I don't know how he stands himself. Sounds like a quality guy. Uh, Gordon Fitzpatrick. I don't know anyone by that name. It's shocking that Nilo kicked out that single mother as soon as she lost her job, and he has not kicked you out, despite the fact that you have not paid your rent since February. Rook's getting up there, but he's still sharp as a tack. He always tells me that I wouldn't stand a chance if he was 20 years younger. <laughs> All right. Louis laments. Louis's such a nice man. He's always been there for me whenever I needed someone to cry on. How about Chelsea? How about you, Chelsea Bando? How would I describe myself? Let's see. Self-employed, moderately attractive, unattached, but hopeful. Kind of like you, except a lot younger. <laughs> uh, what do you think of me, Tex Murphy? I've always thought you were quite attractive. Of course, I've always been known to... Confuse attraction with sympathy. Fair enough. I am a pretty pathetic individual, if, I'm a, if I can editorialize a little bit. Man, Chelsea's sure not her usual cheery self today. Ah, something tells me my window of opportunity with her is closing fast. If I'm going to get her to go out with me, I better keep pouring on the charm till she gives in. All right, maybe I should try asking her out again. What's going on? Um, assertive date making 101. How about a sly invitation to dinner? Well, I got a bunch of cash, but I've got nothing to do with it. I'm glad you're watching I me play this dating I figured I'd go out to dinner sim. tonight, but I hate to eat alone. Are you interested? What? Like a date? Um, I will plead shamelessly. Oh, come on, go out with me. I'll even take a shower. Look, I know you're just trying to be nice. I'm just not in the mood to go out. Damn. So, I heard you picked up a case last night. Is there anything I can do to help? Alright. That didn't go so well. 
let's try it again. If at first you don't succeed getting someone to go out on a date with you, try, try again. You're not here to ask me out again, are you? Actually, I am. Listen, Chelsea, I know you say you never go out with customers. But since I never bought anything from you, officially I'm not a customer. And I'd really like to take you out to dinner tonight. What? Like a date? What Wizard says, Tex Murphy, a love story. That's the one. Uh, okay, I think I I think the only way this is gonna work is for me to plead is to play down the date aspect as much as possible. <sighs> no, it would be more like two friends having a great meal and maybe some stimulating conversation. I guess that'd be okay. I mean, yeah, that'd, that'd be all right. You know, Tex, I haven't really been myself lately, and I really appreciate you looking out for me. Uh, where do you want to go, Chelsea? Hey, this is going to be my pleasure. So what are you in the mood for? You know, I heard Weenie World put tater tots on the menu. I've got a better idea. Why don't you let me make you dinner at my place? It's cheaper than going out. And uh, besides, I have uh, something I'd like to talk to you about. Let's say, uh, 8 o'clock? Well, you talked me into it, Miss Pando. Well, I feel so spoiled. By the way, what should I bring, red or white? You better bring both. <laughs> Finally. After years of relentless pursuit, Chelsea's inviting me over to her apartment for dinner. Oh man, the possibilities are making me woozy. Okay, snap out of it, Murphy, and let's get back to work here. Maybe I should head over to the Ritz and see if Nilo's at the front desk. I'm sure he'll be happy to see me. So, uh, for insisting... For insisting that it not be a date, she sure did lay the flirtation on the thick at the end there. Must have really turned on the charm. Uh, okay, so they still have this clown place. Let's see. What was it? it says, ah, the clown place. Yep, that's the one. Alright, I better go in here and pay my rent. Hold it right there, you sneaking piece of slop. Um, I'm gonna play it cool, guys. Calm down, Nilo. I'm not going anywhere. Huh. Damn straight you ain't. Where's my money? You owe me three months back rent, pukehead. Come strolling in here like some kind of sunbeam from heaven. Cough it up! Hey, I, I, I think this prolonged note is really setting a good atmosphere here. Uh, how much do I owe him? Probably 2100. Yeah, that's more like it. All right. Um, do you have any information for me? Now maybe you can answer a few questions for me. No comprendi. Uh, I'll compliment your language skills. Maybe that'll help. What Wizard says that the uh, clown place is an important part of the neighborhood ambiance. I would agree with that. 
Hey, I had no idea you were bilingual, El Nino. <laughs> no one ever talks to me like that. Get the hell out of here, sicko. Alright, so that didn't go so well. What now, Pinhead? Um... Now maybe you can answer a few questions for me. No comprendi. Fine, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Will that help? Yeah. That's better, amigo. Uh... Do you know anything about Thomas Malloy? Never heard of him. I ain't familiar with that name. Recognize the man in this photo? Yeah, I've seen him before. What can you tell me about it? He used to stay here. I'm gone now. What Which room? room did he stay in? A. What name did he use when he signed in? Matthews. Tyson Matthews. I guess that was one of his aliases. Thanks for the help. Oh, the pleasure was all mine. P. Brett. Hmm. We only stayed here a couple of weeks. Paid up front for two months. But he's too late to get a refund. <laughs> of course he is. What are you asking about me for? You want to ask me out on a date? Sure. Uh, Gordon Fitzpatrick. Nope. Rock Garner? Or Rook Garner? Ah, nicest guy on the street. Me and him, we talk the same language. How about you, Louis Laments? I'd like to wipe the smile off that fat guy's face. But he ain't a bad cook. Oh, maybe that. I don't know, uh... Is he... I can't remember his name. Is he Louis Lemins or is he... No, he's his, his name's Nilo. What did he say about himself? What are you asking about me for? Oh, yeah, that's you right. Ask me out on a date? He... Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, Rick Garner, Louis Lemins, Chelsea Bando. <laughs> I got a few things I'd like to teach that, Chelsea. If you know what I mean. Uh, I don't think I do, good sir. Look, as long as you pay the rent, I don't care if you're the queen of freaking England. All right, well, goodbye. Apartment A is through the door by Nilo's desk and up the stairs. Nilo's had a hard time keeping tenants, so Malloy was probably the last person to stay in the room. Hopefully I'll find a lead once I get inside. The door behind his desk, huh? <laughs> in case, uh, in case you forgot, the movement in this game is very awkward. It is, uh, like the previous Tex Murphy game, you move by moving your mouse. Okay, the room behind his desk is actually this one, probably. The only thing in that storage closet is dust. Oh, okay, never mind. Maybe, maybe it is up the stairs on that other door. The only thing in that... All right, I'm not sure why I, the game decided to put three doors here, but that's okay. All right. Is it room A? It's all locked up. 
Was it room A or room B? I can't remember. Should have written it down, I guess. I don't make a policy of getting to know my neighbors. The Ritz is the kind of place where people stay when they don't want to be found. Alright, so I need to get the code. I'm assuming it's door A. What a scumbag. Nilo knew I couldn't get into the apartment without the code, now I'll probably want to charge me a few hundred bucks for it. This rate, I'm gonna be broke again in a hurry. Hey, you said, uh, you told the guy that it was gonna be plus expenses, so you could try to charge it to him. All right, uh, I'm gonna talk to my friend Nilo and try to get the code from him. All right, Nilo. What do you want? I'm busy here. There's something I forgot to ask you. I figure I paid you enough already, so you owe me. Well, you figured wrong. You're off by about 500 bucks. Um... I will refuse assertively. Well, I'm not going to give you another dime. You give me the information or I'll turn that mug of yours into taco meat. Okay. Uh, on account of my good mood, I won't charge you. Besides, I can't fit any more of your money in my pocket. <laughs> Alright, scumbag. Nyla looks around like he's about to sell some government secret and then lets me take a peek in his special notebook. The code is 4827. 4827, you say? Day two. My head feels like it's full of molasses. Yeah, another swell case for San Francisco's favorite punching bag. I suppose the fact that someone knocked me out must mean I'm on the right track. <sighs> Whoever hit me did a thorough job. Must have interrupted his search of the apartment. Maybe that means he overlooked something. All right. Um, I'm going to, uh, since I have just finished day one, I'm going to save my game. I'm going to call it good for tonight. But thanks for watching uh, me play Tex Murphy, the Pandora Directive. I will play again tomorrow. So tune in then to see the next exciting chapter of Tex Murphy 4.